some of the stats and ways of thinking about some of the key statistics that we're looking at throughout the semester and what they, what they mean, sort of. I want to talk about the uh, Stevens et al. paper we're going to go through in some detail. We're going to do an overview of sensory change in reaction time. And it's not past like 6 o'clock or something like that time. <laughs> we'll look at the Anderson et al. paper. I suspect that um, at least the Anderson et al. paper is going to go on over into next week. And so um, and that's fine because next, the plan stuff for next week I think is probably uh, a little light unlike the last couple of sessions that I've done which I think have been a little heavy so things are kind of smooth out. I hope. Anyway, by the time we get to the end of the semester we'll be done. Uh, how does it say you do? Good job. Good job. Any, any, any feedback I should give her besides good job? Either particular positive or particular... She's patient, areas which is good. Yeah. She's really patient, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Because I'm, I'm impatient. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh, you're wondering, is he kidding? <laughs> Anything else we should talk? No, nobody has any thoughts? You do remember last week's lecture. You know what's to you? Okay. Just about the papers. Quite a few uh, years ago, one of my TAs told me that I should. Um, in the spirit of full disclosure, that I should tell people that even though I'm soft-spoken and most of the time a sort of easygoing guy personality-wise, that I'm kind of a tough grader. So take that as whatever that might mean. Um, most of the stuff about the papers I think is pretty clearly described in the syllabus, but uh, I'd like to have you looking at a so it's clearly a psychology paper it related to aging, and clearly the, the simplest way to make that distinction is if it's in psychology and aging, or if it's in um, 
Journals of Gerontology, Psychological Sciences, it's okay. Somebody uh, pointed out to me this morning that uh, Psychological Sciences no longer labels the page numbers with the P and the S and, and Social Sciences, so just make sure you're actually in the section that says Psychological Science on the top and not down in the Social Science section. You can use that for your other class. Um, Probably something on the order of three to five pages. What I mostly want to see in the papers is, um, you obviously you have to do some summary, but I'm kind of inclined to assume that since you've got into the graduate program in a world-class university that you know how to summarize already. So I'm actually more interested in seeing the critique part of it and maybe a bit on applications at the end, so it's more like you're, you're thinking about the article that I want to see. Um, at this stage, probably the simplest things to critique for you would be the, uh, the subject selection we talked about uh, in the first uh, course lecture. Um, thinking about whether the majors used really tap the Concepts, constructs that the authors say that they do. Is, is the white news? Can, can often use the measures that people oh, are uh -huh. using. So, our procedures, if it's more of an experimental study, it might be more of a matter of, you know, do you think that the task that they're having people do uh, actually measure what they're supposed to measure? Or if it's, you know, self report questionnaires, do you think that measures actually measure what they say? We'll spend some more time on this a little bit later in the class, but. Um, one of the things that you want to move away from during the course of your education here is the assumption that just because it says it's a depression scale, it's actually measuring depression. Um, okay. More than some of these issues as the course goes on. But, um, there are lots of things that probably actually measure something different than what they originally started out to measure. And what their names may still suggest. Um, whether you think the, the results actually confirm the hypotheses regardless of what the authors say about it. Again, uh, just a reminder for results, you do, you do not have to be responsible for any of the statistical analyses and that sort of thing. Look for the, the author's clear statements in the results section, what they found, and also look at the whatever graphs and tables they have, see what they really think about that. We're going to be looking at some graphs today. Um, <clears throat> and then since uh, most of you have an applied focus in one way or another, kind of closing off, with, you know, what, do you, what do you think this research says to programs and policies for older adults? What's it all mean? I'd like to actually get the papers in hard copy form, all of you that are here in the class. And actually, for those of you that are out there online, if you're taking the class online, it, but you're on campus sometimes, I'd actually rather get a hard copy in my mailbox if you're in Washington or Iowa or something. Email it, cut down on the amount of printing that the school office has to do, and I'll get the papers faster. So any questions? Everybody's clear? When you say critique subject selection, you're talking about just like the people selected to, or whomever the, the researching, either the concept or the persons that they're doing their research on. Yep. Yeah. I think they should have. Covered the full age range. Right. You think that they people were too old, they weren't old enough, they were too sick. They should have been community residents. They should have been nursing homes. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, to what depth does we present the statistical? Um, Whatever depth you're comfortable. With. Starting from not at all to. 